Do you ever just see something and have this uncontrollable compulsion to crochet it? I sure do, which is why today we are going to be making a mini Pochita from Chainsaw Man. I saw this little dude and I knew immediately that I had to make a mini version from him. I don't know if this will technically be classed as part of my minis series. And for those of you who aren't sure what I'm talking about, I have a series called my Popcorn Stitch mini series where I make little animals using popcorn stitches somewhere in the pattern. I'll put a link for the playlist of those down in the description. And let me know what you think. Should Pochita be classed as a popcorn stitch mini or not? Either way, that is what we're going to be crocheting today. So if you'd like to make your own, grab your hooks and let's get started. I don't think that was a very good chainsaw noise. To make this pattern, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins, some stuffing, a pair of 10 millimeter safety eyes, as well as eight ply yarn in the colors of orange, black, gray, and white. Alrighty, before we get started here, I just want to mention something, and that is in regards to the stitch abbreviations. In this pattern, we're going to use both a popcorn stitch and a Paco stitch. I abbreviate both of those with PC. However, Popcorn Stitch, I abbreviate using capital P, capital C. Paco Stitch, I abbreviate using lowercase p and lowercase c. All the stitch abbreviations and such will be down in the pinned comment, but just because it can get a little bit confusing when it comes to those two, I just wanted to establish from the get-go that they were different. Now that that's out the way, we can get on with the pattern. We're going to start off by putting six single crochet in a magic circle for round one. For round two, we're going to do six increases, and an increase is just two single crochet in the same stitch. Doing my first single crochet, I'm going back into the same stitch and doing a second. That is one increase. We're going to repeat this five more times. For round three, we're going to do one single crochet to start with. And stitch marker goes in there and then I'm going to do an increase in the next stitch and then we're just going to continue to repeat one single crochet or one increase for the entire round which should be six times in total Round four is two single crochet and an increase repeated six times. When round four is finished, we should have 24 stitches in our round. And then rounds five, six, and seven are each going to be 24 single crochet. In round eight, we're going to crochet our first set of legs and we're going to do that by using a popcorn stitch. You're going to begin round eight by just doing nine single crochet. And nine. Then we're going to do our first popcorn stitch. To crochet a popcorn stitch, you're going to begin by putting five double crochet in the same stitch. To crochet a double crochet, yarn over first, then go into the stitch, yarn over once more and pull through. This will leave you with three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and now you should have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over for a final time, 
and pull through both of those loops. And that is your first double crochet complete. We're going to do four more all in the same stitch. Once again, you're going to yarn over first, go into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through, have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops. Second double crochet, now we need to do three more. And that's our five double crochet finished. Our next step is going to be to just pull up with our hook. And we're going to pull up so we leave a nice large loop here. At this point, be careful not to tug on your working yarn because we don't want this to pull out. We want that to stay nice and big right there. Next, we're going to insert our hooks into double crochet number one. If you're having trouble finding which one that is, start from your last one and count backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going to insert our hooks into this stitch from front to back. So our hook is pushing away from us. We're then going to take this large loop that we just left and place it on the head of our hooks. You might want to keep it in place with a finger, but make sure it stays on your hook. When it's on there, we're going to then pull on our working yarn and tighten that loop up against our hook. So it's nice and tight, it just looks like a regular loop now. And we're going to pull this loop that we've just tightened through the first double crochet as if we were doing a slip stitch. We're just going to pull that through. The final step of the popcorn stitch is to chain one, chain one. And it's crucial that we do this because we're going to need this chain to work into in the next round. After we've completed our first popcorn stitch, we're then going to do four single crochet. Because the popcorn stitch is fairly large and bulky, just nudge that aside a little bit with your thumb so you can see the next free stitch that you need to work into. I'm going to bring my hook down, single crochet one, then two, three and four and now we're going to crochet our second popcorn stitch we're going to begin by doing those five double crochet all in the same stitch and five pull up with your hook so we leave a nice large loop insert your hook into double crochet number one count backwards if you need to we're going to take this large loop place it on our hook and then make sure we just keep it in place grab your working yarn pull on that so the loop tightens up we're going to pull that loop through our first double crochet like a slip stitch and then chain one and that is our second popcorn stitch all done we're going to finish off round number eight by doing nine single crochet like we did before just nudge that popcorn stitch aside if you need to and we're going to crochet one And nine. Rounds nine, 10, and 11 are each 24 single crochet as well. But for round number nine, we will need to work into those chain ones for our popcorn stitches, which if you've never done a popcorn stitch before, I can throw you off a little bit. All we're going to do is start by doing nine single crochet because we did nine single crochet in round eight before we did our popcorn stitch. Eight and nine. And single crochet number 10 will need to be made into this chain one from our popcorn stitch. So we have our popcorn stitch here, and at the top of it should be the chain one. We're going to go in there and single crochet. Because we had four single crochet between each of our popcorn stitches, that means we're just going to do four more across and four, which brings us to our second popcorn stitch. And once again, we're going to work into this chain one that we did. And then in round eight, we just finished off with nine single crochet. So that's what we're going to do here. Mm -hmm. 
with round nine done, we're then going to do rounds 10 and 11, and they are each also 24 single crochet, but a little bit easier because we don't need to worry about working into the chain one from the popcorn stitches. After round 11, we're going to add our safety eyes. So just secure your end, and then we're going to place the safety eyes between rounds four and five on either side of the head. And obviously before you do this, you'll want to have your feet facing downwards. Start at round one and just count your way out. One, two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to place my eye here. And then I'm wondering if I should bump this eye size up because I've used a slightly thicker eight ply yarn. Well, let me grab my 12 mils and see if they look a bit better. No, that's 14. I don't want 14, that'll be too big. Okay, let's try the 12. Mm. Yep, I like that better. So I'm gonna stick with the 12 millimeter. And I'm just going to put the other one on the opposite side. And have a look at your eyes from all angles. Make sure they're sitting right, they're nice and in line. And I'm wondering if this one's a little bit high. I might move that down one stitch. Mm. Yeah, that's better. Once you're happy with their positioning, you can pop the backs on those. And then we're going to continue crocheting and we're up to round 12 and round 12 is where we're going to do our second set of legs. We're going to do nine single crochet, one popcorn stitch, four single crochet, one popcorn stitch and finish with nine single crochet. So this is the exact same thing we did in round number eight. Round 13 is going to be 24 single crochet and like we did in round 9 you will need to work into the chain one from the end of your popcorn stitches. Round 14 is going to be our first decrease. We're going to do two single crochet, one decrease repeated six times. Start off with your first two single crochet and then we're going to do an invisible decrease. To crochet that, go under the front loops of the next two stitches, under the first front loop, then straight under the second front loop. You're going to yarn over and then pull through both of those front loops and this should leave you with two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over again and pull through those two loops. And we're just going to continue doing two single crochet, one decrease for the rest of the round. When round 14's finished, I'm just going to stop and add my stuffing. And when that's all in, we're going to continue on with round 15, which is one single crochet, one decrease, repeated six times. And then round 16, which is our final round, is just six decreases. I'm just going to cut a short tail of yarn, then pull up with my hook. And for this next step, you'll need to grab your needle. We're going to thread this tail end through our needles. And then you're going to go under the front loop of the last six stitches. Start behind the front loop, push your needle under it and forward towards you. And repeat this for all six, one, 
and six then just pull firmly on that yarn and the hole will close go directly back into the center of the last round and then just weave this tail end in through the body to secure it and make sure it doesn't come off your needle because that helps what we're going to do now is add part of the tail so you'll need your body color yarn which is the orange for that and what we're going to do is just insert our crochet hooks at the back here i'm going through between rounds 12 and 13 and i'm pushing my hook under the stitch that's sort of between the eyes or as close as i can get it that means it'll be nice and centered on the body once you've gone through that stitch you're going to bring in your body color yarn line it up behind your hook yarn over with it pull it through the stitch you've just gone through and then slip stitch to create the tail all we're going to do is one per co stitch we're going to work back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into and you're going to single crochet this time and then you're going to chain three one two three for this next part we want to work into the back bumps and the back bump is this little bit of yarn behind our front and back loops here if you look at your stitches from front on you can see the front loop and the back loop they look like little v shapes if you turn those over oh hang on i don't want to pull this out get back in there there we go if you turn those over you can see a little bit of yarn behind each of those v's that's the back bump we want to go into the back bump of the first chain that we made I'm going to insert my hook into there and then I'm going to single crochet and from here we're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch across from where we started so I went around this stitch I'm going to slip stitch across this stitch here the one right next to it if I can get my hook in there and slip stitch you're going to cut this yarn and then just weave both ends back into the body to secure them and that is at least the first portion of the tail done we've got a little bit to add after that but before we crochet any of the features what i would recommend you do is add the white to your eyes at this point you can add it at the end but I find it easier to attach it without all the additional little crochet bits in the way all you need to do for that is cut a length of your white yarn and thread it through your needle we're then going to insert our needle somewhere into the body it doesn't really matter where you can do this anywhere as long as it's away from the eyes you're then going to push your needle up and out through the body and emerge at sort of the top of the eye where you would like the white bit to start so I keep hitting the I keep hitting the safety eye so I'm going to come this way and then I'm going to go back through this way but what we're looking for here is when you pull your yarn through the body you're going to pull it until just a little bit of yarn is hanging outside of the stitch that we originally worked into because we're going to use this to tie off at the end so this needs to be long enough that you can tie a knot with it once you've got into position with your first eye you're then going to push the yarn down around the eye and insert your needle into a stitch at the bottom of the eye from here you're going to push your needle across to the opposite eye so we're going across the head to the opposite eye and we want to emerge from the top again basically mirroring what we've done here so I'm going to emerge from this row but next to the second eye so I'm pulling that through as I pull this yarn through I want to make sure that it lays flat against the eye so I'm just going to use my thumb to guide it a little bit and we want to pull it firmly but not too firmly that it disappears under the eye and you can also pull it from this end as well your original little tail there so I'm going to pull on that and that's looking pretty good we're then going to repeat the process on the second eye we're already at the top we're going to go down and around to the bottom and I think I worked into no this row here so I'm going to jump down there and once again we're just going straight across the body 
but this time we don't need to go next to this first eye we're just going in a stitch away from, <laughs> we're just going in a stitch away from it so I'm going to pull that through I'm going to do the same thing I did on the first I'm just going to guide my white yarn and the one a little bit too far under there I don't think I put the back on this one properly I didn't push it in far enough so what I will do is there we go I'll hold it firmly as I pull the white yarn and I might have to get my felting needle out later and just make sure it sticks there but for now that is that's not bad that's okay so I'm going to leave that there the final step is to work straight back into the stitch we just emerged from and then out of our original stitch and you want to take care and make sure that you're working out the exact same stitch so we need to be in the same space there pull your yarn through just double check everything make sure it's all laying nice and flat it's roughly the same size when it is we're just going to tie these two ends off I like to do three or four knots usually so it's nice and tight three I'm just going to trim away some of the excess yarn and then push that knot back into the body. You can use your scissors for this, you can use your needle or you can even use your crochet hook to pull it back into the body. So now that that's hidden, our eyes are finished and we can go on and crochet the rest of our features. The first of the features that we're going to make are the mouth pieces and these are really easy so using your body color yarn we're just going to create a magic circle and then put six single crochet in the magic circle and six you're going to close that up and then you're finished that's it that's all we need to do for the mouth pieces so we're going to make two of those I have done one usually I crochet all I keep hitting that today usually I crochet all my double pieces beforehand so I'm ready to go I don't have to waste too much time filming but this is so small that I'm just going to do it here again we're doing six single crochet in a magic circle and six close you up and then we're good to go okay the next piece we're going to crochet is going to be the chainsaw part for that we're going to need both grey and black yarn we're going to start off with our grey and we're going to make a slip knot and then we're going to chain five one two three four and five for this piece we will need to work both sides of the chain so we're going to go down this part and then back up the other side we're going to do three single crochet and we're starting in the second chain from the hook as well one two and three then we're going to place an increase in the last chain increase we're going to rotate our work at this point we're not turning it as we would if we were working in rows we're just rotating it around and we're going to work the chains down the opposite side so we should still have four to work with we're going to do an increase again in the first one then one two three single crochet but on the third single crochet we're going to change color so this is two and on three I'm going to change color to my black I'll go into that chain yarn over and pull through so I have two loops on my hook I'm going to bring in my black yarn and I'm going to line that up behind my hook I'm going to yarn over in black pull through those two loops and that's how I'm going to change color cut a tail of gray so I can weave that in or work over it in the black we're going to create the teeth for our chainsaw piece here and we're going to create those teeth using Picot stitches and like I mentioned at the start of this video, these are also going to be abbreviated to PC, but it will be a lowercase p and c. We're going to chain one in the black, turn our work. So I just finished the chainsaw part and I realized I read the pattern wrong. 
nothing too major it's just instead of one single crochet one picot stitch repeated five times it's actually supposed to be one slip stitch one picot stitch repeated five times all you need to do is just substitute in the single crochets between the picot stitches for slip stitches sorry i didn't catch that earlier but hopefully you haven't advanced too far in this video where you don't see this correction we're going to start off with a single crochet And then in the next stitch, we're going to do our picot stitch. And if you remember from the tail that we did, we start off with a single crochet. We chain three, one, two, and three. We go into the back bump of the first chain and single crochet. And then we can continue on working the next stitch. For this round, all we're going to be doing is repeating one single crochet one picot stitch for the entire round when we finished row one we had 10 single crochet in our round that means we're going to have to repeat this one single crochet one picot stitch five times and then when you're finished we're just going to cut a tail so we can sew this onto the head at the assembly stage Next, we're going to make the handles and we're going to make two of those. We're going to make the one that goes on the back and one that goes on the bum. So the one we're going to start with is the back handle. And for that one, we're also going to start off with a slip knot and then we're going to chain eight. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do seven single crochet back down along the chain. and seven and then all we need to do for rows two through to five is chain one turn our work and do just one single crochet that was row two for row three chain one turn work and single crochet four chain turn single crochet and then finally row five chain turn and one single crochet so that's fairly simple what we need to do now though is cut a tail and we'll need a little bit of yarn so we can sew this end on and then from here we're going to insert our hooks why are you stuck from here we're going to insert our hooks directly into stitch one so the very first stitch or the end stitch right here we're going to bring in our black yarn again we're going to join that with a slip stitch and this slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch in our rows. We're going to go back into that same stitch and do the first single crochet for row two of this second bit of the handle. We're then going to repeat what we've just done on the other side for rows three, four, and five. We're going to chain, turn, and do one single crochet. I hate black so much one single crochet then four and then row four chain turn one single crochet for row five chain turn and one single crochet and that is the back handle done we're going to leave a little tail on this end too for sewing and these two ends we're going to weave those in but we'll take care of that at the assembly stage so that's that done the other handle that we're going to make is for the bum and we're following the same method we're just making it a little bit smaller again begin with a slip knot but this time we're going to chain only six one two three four five and six starting in the second chain from the hook work five single crochet back down your chain and five and then this time we're going to do rows two through to four as chain one turn your work and one single crochet cut your yarn so we have enough to sew with and we're going to repeat the same thing we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch or the one at the end we're going to rejoin our black yarn with a slip stitch 
And once again, this doesn't count as a stitch in our round. We're going to single crochet back into that same stitch. And then rows two to four are chain, turn, and one single crochet, two. The first thing I want to do before I start assembling this thing is just take care of the ends that need it. So I'll be the ends from my little chainsaw piece here. I worked over those so I can just snip those off. And for all the rest, actually I worked over that too, so that can go. And for all the rest, we're just going to weave them in through the backs of the stitches to hide them. So for my slip knot end for my handle piece, I'll just weave them in across here. I'll do the same with this end and then I'll repeat the process on my second handle. Alrighty, my ends are weaved in and now we can start assembling. I'm going to start off with the little mouth pieces and the reason I didn't weave these ends in behind the stitches is because I like to just weave them in through the body after I've sewn them on, I find that easier. We're just going to put the little mouth pieces down here just below round one and sort of half on one side and then the other half will be here on this side. My thumbs are probably in the way there, but I'll pin them in place and show you, and then we can sew those on. And then there's number two. So we're going to use the longer tail end to sew those on. And then when we're finished with that, we're going to weave in this shorter end from our magic circle. And you only need probably like two or three stitches across the top of these. They're just a very small piece, so you don't really need to do too much sewing. Now that we've got the mouth pieces sewn on, we're going to attach the saw. And we're just going to stick that on the forehead here. So it's slightly overlapping the part where the two mouth pieces meet, right in the middle there. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to pin down and sew on. We're then going to attach the handles. The larger of the two, which is the one that we started off by chaining eight, that goes on the back. And you're just going to center that sort of just behind the eyes. And you're going to pin each side down and then sew those on. Just check that your piece hasn't twisted before you sew on the second side. I almost made that mistake just then. Just when you've sewn on the first side, double check everything before you sew on the second. You don't want that all twisted up. The first handle we placed horizontally across the back like this. The butt one is going to go on vertically, so we're going to place it on like that. And we're going to do the same things we've done previously, pin and then sew. And our little Pachito here is almost finished. We've just got one more step to go, and that is to add the pull cord to the tail. For that, we're going to insert our hooks directly into the tip of our Pico stitch here. We're going to grab our black yarn. You're going to pull that through and then slip stitch. And then you're just going to chain a couple of times. And you can make this as long as you like. One, two, three, mm, I might do four. Now I know there's like a little triangle on the end here, but in my testing I couldn't get that to look very good no matter which way I tried it Like I tried chaining extra and then working back into the chain I tried doing just like another Paco stitch on the top and I just didn't like it So I'm going to leave this as is I'm just going to cut it's a little bit of a Little bit of a yarn tail 
pull up with my hook and then I'm just going to tie a knot at the end here. I might even do two or three so it's extra secure. And then I'll just cut that even shorter. And then this end I'm just going to weave into the body. And I'm going to do this under the tail because you won't see it when the tail's in the correct position. So I'll go th back through the, I'll go in through the backs of my stitches, work my way down to the body and then hide it in there. And with that little bit all weaved in, oh, I didn't hide that very well, did I? That's okay, I'll fix that. And with that little bit all weaved in, we are finished.